Okay, so <clears throat> welcome to, uh, so hi guys, it's me, Raf from Radiant Reality. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me as always. Today I have uh, a lady who is a human design expert as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Denise, welcome to the Radiant Reality channel. Thank you so much for agreeing to be here and share your extensive knowledge. Um, and before we go into that, I just have to say, I've had a human design reading from Denise. And I literally felt like she'd opened up my life, all of my secrets and poured them out onto a page and into a video. It truly was phenomenal. And it was amazing to see myself from a completely different perspective. So Denise, thank you so much for being here and welcome. Please tell us a bit about yourself. Um, well, thanks for having me. I'm really, I'm really great to, uh, I'm really glad to be here. Um, about myself. Um, I've been all over the place. I was a nurse, pediatric nurse for 11 years. I taught English in Thailand for a couple of years. I, um, now I'm working with human design. I've been studying astrology for about 20 years. I've been in human design since about 2014. And, um, yeah, I, I got my fingers in a lot of pots. I, um, I even have a jewelry channel that I do as well. But right now, my main focus is on um, on human design. So I'm excited to be here and talk about it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Denise, what is human design? He human design is a compilation or um, it was brought into being in 1987 by a man named Ra Uruhu. And he was originally, um, he had a different name. His name was Robert Krakauer. But what happened was he went to Ibiza, Spain, and I think he was doing a fair bit of psychedelics and, and, and that kind of stuff, which, you know, whatever works. Um, I'm not judging, you know, and, uh, and he had this major download. And I think it was about seven days where he had it back in 1987. It did actually coincide with what was called a supernova 1987. I think it was in a like around January thereabouts. Um, it could be February, but you know, I can't say for sure, but around the same time, um, he had this major download and he had the whole system of human design. Now the, the system is quite intricate in that it combines astrology, it combines Western and Eastern astrology, it combines the Ching, it combines Kabbalah, it combines the uh, Hindu chakra system, and it also uh, has a little what's called quantum physics involved. So it, it, it's a compilation of a lot of different um, you know, modalities, or some people would say sciences, some people won't, but you know what I mean. It's, it's, it's a compilation of a lot of different things that are all coming together, and, and it works. In a, it in, really a, <laughs> in a crazy, yeah, exactly, in a crazy way, and I, I can't tell you why. But it does, and um, and I can actually show you if you want. I have a, a human design mandala. If you would like me to show it to you, I can show you that. Absolutely, please. Uh, guys, if you've never seen a human design chart or mandala, as uh, Denise said, please check this out. Um, if you're gonna share your screen. So there we are. So this is a human design mandala, or, you know, like I said, now, if we look at it, most times all you're going to get is the center part. And that would be the actual body graph of human design on the outside. If you notice anybody who's familiar with astrology, will see that there's all the, the um, signs, the zodiac glyphs, right? Yeah. And then on the outside of that, we have, that's what's called all the gates. Can you see my cursor moving there? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, perfect, perfect. And then on the outside, we have the I Ching hexagrams. So it's all all in there. Now, where does the Hindu um, chakra system comes from? It comes from all this, the centers, right? So we have all the, this is the head center, this is the Ajna, the throat, this is what we call the G center or the self center, the will center, the solar plexus, the um, sacral, this is the spleen and this is the root center. So if you have some level of the chakras as well, you can see it as well. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a compilation of all of it, but for the most part, what you're going to get is you're going to get just the central part. And so it all comes together and we have all the gates. And the, the cool thing about it is that every gate lines up with, um, if you, again, if you, if you're into astrology at all, and I know you are, um, it all lines up to, the actual gates. So for instance, we would say that the gate one is a Scorpio gate. Now, right now we have Saturn, it's moving in, in, in uh, the gate 60. And the cool thing about the gate 60 is it straddles two signs. It straddles 
Capricorn and Aquarius. So when you see that happening in the world and you see Saturn go from one zodiac to the next in the same gate, you can see different kind of um, iterations of that particular gate you know, based on the sign, like I, that's what I've noticed, which I thought was really cool, but I'm not going to get too much into that part of it. Cause that's kind of delving into the, the, um, the actual, uh, you know, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it kind of coincides with the astrology at the moment as well. We currently have, um, at the time of recording this, uh, we currently have Saturn is in Aquarius, but is retrograde. So it's going to go back into Capricorn. So it's really interesting that you kind of pulled that up there and it kind of, it shows here as well in the astrology at the current sort of time frame. Um, so I wanted to ask you as well, how can, uh, how would you say that human design can enhance your life? How can human design can enhance your life? Because what it does is I don't think I know of a better personality profile than human design. Um, it will literally, like you say, shake out all your stuff and, <laughs> and say, okay, this is me. And um, how, am I, how am I expressing this part of who I am? Um, from a personal perspective, I can tell you one thing that was kind of interesting. As you go through the gates and you learn the more, you know, your chart more, you'll, you'll catch yourself and you'll say, oh, that's my, you know, whatever. For me, mine was about um, one particular gate was the answer and it's called gate four. And I could, I could see myself, I would go off and I'd, I'd be out with a group of friends or something like that. And they'd be saying something. And, you know, sometimes you don't need an answer for, for comments that people say, I mean, literally it's just, people will just say stuff and what are you going to do about it? Nothing. You're just going to, you know, you just actually, whatever you hear it, but I always had an answer. And I was like, and then one day this woman um, who, who was not really a friend, more of a colleague, but happened to be there. And she just like, she just ripped it, like ripped me. And she's like, and I was like, oh my gosh, I was giving an answer and I just really didn't need to. So it will, it will get you sort of in that perspective where you're starting to catch yourself and go, okay, you know, um, this is, this is me showing the, the lesser side or not the lesser side, but like you, you would say the shadow or the light, what, which side do I want to, you know, put out into the world and how do I want to express myself? Like there's gates that there's a gate of control, the gate 21. I mean, that, that's all about, you know, holding on, you know, people would say that it's the type of thing where people will, they'll park their car a million miles away because they're scared to get a scratch, you know, like if they're going out to a, a shopping or something like that and they want everything perfect and they don't want anything to be broken and, and that kind of stuff. So when you start to see that stuff and, and then maybe you're trying to control things too much, or maybe you're trying to hold on to things too much, you can go, okay, now it's time to see that the world is about sometimes letting go. So that's a big lesson that you're going to learn from that gate. And, and if you have, for instance, it's all about um, electromagnetics too, the, the relationships that you come into. So if I have the gate 21 and then somebody else has a gate 45, that's an electromagnetic, right? And um, I can just show you the, a chart really quick if you want. Yeah, please. Um, sorry, I lost you there we are. Uh, And so if we look at, so what I'm talking about is the gate 21 here. And so if somebody came in and, and this would be the gate 45, it's hard to see. And so if I have this in, in a relationship with somebody, there's a total power struggle because as wow. soon as you have, there's a power struggle. And because as soon as you have two energies, they connect together, mm -hmm. but not only do they connect together, we have, this is called the will center. Okay. And that's all about willpower. Okay. So here you and I, you have the 45, you don't, but what, but you know, for instance, you have the 45, I have the 21 and the 45, 21 is all about money. It's all about money, resources, all that kind of stuff. So you and I are going to have money fights. We're going to, you're going to say the person with the 45, this is all about queen and, and, um, the queen energy is a 45 and the 21 is a treasurer. So that's just the way they, they, they call it. It's wow, easy because it kind of remembers, you know, it kind of gets you um, uh, into the concept of, of the actual practical use of it. Cause I'm all about practicality. 
about <laughs> how can you no it, it really is it's like if i can't use it in my life what's the point of it you know like that that's my go-to thing so if i talk about something i feel like it's really valuable information it's the virgo in me so just <laughs> Yeah, no, but, um, absolutely. I love that as well. So if you were talking about that, I would see kind of like the queen energy is maybe wants more of the luxurious stuff that you can absolutely, use on, absolutely. on a daily basis, yeah. right? And then the treasurer type energy is going to say, well, can we actually afford that? Do we really need it? Is it going to serve the purpose? And that kind of sees where you get into maybe a bit of that kind of, um, of a clash energy. Really, really interesting. Um, it's funny, one thing that you mentioned, oh, uh, and you're back. <laughs> uh, one thing that you mentioned that yeah, I found, sorry. Uh, no, that's fine, it's my internet connection. Um, one thing that you mentioned that I found really fascinating is uh, learning about yourself. There were so many aha moments when I was reading the, the report that you did for me or when I was watching the video. Um, one of which I always, and I had this from like a really young person, I always used to have this idea that I was either late for something or never quite on time. Mm. And when I read uh, the report and you said to me, you, you know, and uh, to, to back that up as well, I've always lived my life by signs. So if, you know, if I get that little tingle up the back of my neck or I see a certain thing that happens out in the world, I'd be like, yeah now I need to do it or no I probably shouldn't um you know same with that gut response and when I was reading the report that you did for me it was like well ask the question and then wait for the answer to come from your environment and it resonated at such a deep level because it was like okay so I'm not just super superstitious and I'm not kind of you know totally out there woo woo this is real this is how I respond to the world and it's how the, the world actually reveals to me the path that I'm supposed to take I, I mean, like, even now I've got goosebumps because it was <laughs> such a powerful moment for me because because you're a generator type and it's all about response and I mean you know every every type has a particular way of interacting with the world and so you could say that on 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 one side you could say that human design is like a party trick it's like where you read palms but then <laughs> you could also look at you know, like somebody who knows a little bit about palm reading or something like that. And you do it at a wedding or I did that one time for like, I was reading a book and I did it all night. It was, and then I was like, Oh no, if I see one more hand, I was like, I don't want any more of this, but you, you know, it is, it could be like a party trick, but it could also be this, this, what I feel it is, is something where you can actually get in there and go, okay, what, where are the parts of my relationship or where are the parts of me that I can start to look at it in a different way and maybe maybe just shift it to the other aspect where do i see the shadows have been sort of looming where do i see that the light's wanting to break through because it always is it's always ready to break through there's like a crack and you can see that little bit of light and most of us will walk by but then when you start to start to notice you go oh okay there is something there and i can actually start to open that more i have all the power to do that human design is not about dogma it is about experimenting. And so there are people, for instance, who will say, okay, I don't like, I don't like waiting. Okay. I, I don't like waiting. And, and I, I'm going to say that pretty much nobody likes waiting. I don't think there's <laughs> anybody that likes waiting. Let's be honest. Right. Um, but they'll say, well, can I just go ahead and do this? And I always say, absolutely go and do whatever feels right. And based on the results you get, then you can form an opinion on if it was the right move for you or if it wasn't. And see, that's how you use human design. You go out and you say, okay, I haven't, I'm just, I want to do this thing. This thing comes into my mind and I just want to go ahead and do it. And I don't have any signs. Like I don't have anything to respond to, but I go out and I put all this effort and all this stuff and I, and I work it. And then it, you put it out into the world and what's your results? And, and you go, oh, maybe it wasn't this, you know, maybe yeah. I want it. And then you come another time and someone says, you know, I want you to do this. I, I think you're great at this. I, I want you to do this. You do it. And suddenly everything goes, you know, boom, everything's right on task. And, and that's the key. And because we go through life so frustrated and we go through life saying, okay, where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? And, and when you have these little signposts, you know, like you say, responding, you know, then it gives you a little bit of a click. So you go, okay, Absolutely. now I can see that where I'm supposed to go because really it's wishy-washy in the world. You know, we just don't yeah. know half the time right it's it's the real world 
I love that. It's so true as well. And I think this is one of the things that I'm really grateful for at the moment in the world. We are seeing that a lot of people are waking up to signs, to their personal understandings, their personal correspondences. More people than ever uh, know their star sign, know their moon sign. You know, people are delving into this stuff, which is wonderful. And I feel like that's because the mass consciousness is elevating. People want to know more about themselves. And, you know, as the age old uh, adage says, to know the universe is to know thyself and vice versa. Um, and I think this is it. You know, if, if you, the more you know about yourself, what triggers you, what sets you on fire, what you love to do, what you dislike, uh, the more you know yourself in that respect, you know what's yours and what's not. And you can kind of pick up on those signs. I love that. Um, so, Denise, what are the profiles? What are, what are, what are they called? Okay, so I, I'll bring up a, a, um, an image if that's okay. Yes, please. And uh, I will show you. Right, here we go. So, um, I call it HD astrology. That's just my little catch thing because I think there's so much astrology in it. And I have astrology background, so yeah, I'm, call me what you will. So, we have five different types. Um, originally, when Ra brought it out, he only had four types, but then later on, he added the, um, the, the, uh, human, the, um, uh, mat manifesting generator, which is actually a combination of manifesting as well as generator. So I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll touch on that in a second. So yeah. if we look at the least, po the, not least popular, <laughs> that's, that's a really mean thing to say. Um, the least <laughs> common is what I'm trying to say. They're very popular, lovely people. Uh, everybody who has this are amazing. So let's just kind of, <laughs> I'm just, I have to back up because it, it isn't popular. It's not about popularity. It's about um, commonality. And the commonality is that it's, it's, I think like, basically very small percent i'll show you the um percentages so if we look at the reflector it's only like like one percent thereabouts yeah um, manifestor is nine percent projector is 20 percent generator 36 percent and manifesting generator about 34 percent of all the population and this is based on the jovian website and that's that's Ruhu. so we talk about the reflector is as you notice i don't know if you can see that very well but i'm going to show you a better picture and that's where all the centers are open um yeah. usually reflectors are always talked about last so i'm going to talk about them first because i want i want to just kind of shift it up because you know, i know they're super important. um and she's wonderful it's funny as well because when we get together even if mm -hmm. it's just over like over the airways the yeah. energy between us is incredible and i tell you every time i talk to her i have the most amazing ideas and she will just sit and giggle because she's like, this energy for her, she says it's wonderful. And for me, I'm like, yeah, just buzzing with ideas. It's amazing. Yeah, because what they do is, is they're, you know, the whole concept is, is they're reflecting. With a reflector, all the centers are open. And whenever you have any white spots, so people will say, you'll look at a human design chart and they'll go, oh, there's a lot of colors and stuff. Are they, you know, do I only have, is it a special color for me compared to you? And, and, the, and the answer with that, to that would be no. It's always going to be the same colors. And I'll just quickly show that before I start talking about the reflector. So if you notice, the throat center is always going to be brown. And so all these colors are always going to be the same color. Now, the only difference you're going to notice is if they're defined or what's called, um, yeah, defined, basically. There's, I'm going to just use that word. Um, defined as in they're, they're lit up, basically. The light has been switched on because there's a road. There's a road between right. centers. So for instance, if we say this is, is defined, it's lit up, right? And this is lit up because this whole road is connected, you see? So that's how we know that a, a center is defined. Now, if you only have half a road, for instance, like here down in the root center, you only have half a road, that means it's not lit up. It means that it's open. So that's the difference. And always going to be the same color. And one quick, a really quick trick is if somebody, like there's a lot of generators, obviously I showed you 30, 34%. And yeah, so we're, there, there's a lot of generators out there. The way to always tell a generator is they have a red square. That's it. As okay. long as they have a red square, they're a generator. And that's the most simple thing. Now, the other types can sometimes, you have to look at the chart a little bit more and kind of figure it out. But that's the one thing. Now, let's go back to the reflector. So the reflector is completely wide open. This is um, 
when, whenever we have a center open, that means that we're actually co collecting energy. Like it's almost like anybody with a defined center is giving off this energetic. Like we all know we have an aura, right? Yeah. And we all know that we're always, you know, kind of everywhere we go, we're bringing our energy with us. And sometimes we bring more energy than some people are just more big in their energy. And, and, the, and that shows up in the human design chart as well. I mean, there are places where your energy is just going to be bigger. Like when you walk into a room, if you have the gate 15, people are going to notice you. If you walk into the room and you have the gate 59, the gate six, people are going to notice you. It's called aura busting. You walk into a room, you have the 21, uh, 25, 51, people are going to notice you. And so, and, and also profiles. I mean, there's a lot of ways people will notice you. So what happens is you have this energy and you're giving it off. But when somebody has the reflector energy, they don't give off a particular energy. They're literally always absorbing it. Now, not only do these centers absorb energy, but they make it bigger. So they amplify it. So it, make it makes it huge, right? right? So when somebody, for instance, you don't have an emotional wave, and, and I have videos about this all because it, you know, it gets in a little bit more deeper than than we can do in, in, a, in, in a couple, you know, in a couple minutes. But ultimately what it's saying is that if you have somebody with like, for instance, a reflector or anybody with an open emotional center, and then you have somebody come in with a defined emotional center with a big wave and the big waves are the 1222 and the 3955. Um, when they come in, it's like, whew, it's like almost like you're almost hit when, when, with this energy, it, it can be a real big, like, push or it's hard to explain but once you get more into feeling your chart you'll you'll feel okay this person has will willpower like i can feel that willpower means that they're just pushing you and, and they don't mean to be it's just energy <laughs> but you can just yeah. feel it and they're like pushing and 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 that's the same with emotional energy so somebody who has an open emotional center could be someone who is considered more emotional somebody who you know cries you know, like my father used to say, cries at a stop sign. You know what I mean? Like they, they're very emotional. And, uh, and he had an open emotional center. So I guess he, he, he had it right. He knew. But um, so ultimately it's about this energy that not only are you drawing this energy in, but you're amplifying it. Now, if you're wide open like this, imagine all this energy from everybody coming in and just kind of being deposited in your, in your sort of being. So there's potential for somebody who doesn't know their energy to go out and feel so overwhelmed now, yeah, you know, yeah. so especially you, as a reflector. And with that, so and it's really, really interesting. And it makes a lot of sense as well. In fact, I mean, I wanted to ask as well, because what you're describing there sounds really similar to, to an empath. Somebody, Absolutely. you know, like a constant, but do they have that, that sort of kind of gift about them? Absolutely. A reflector will always be an empath and yes. anybody with an open emotional center is an empath. And based on what's open, that means that's the energy you're feeling. So if I say that I have an open identity and, um, you know, we'll go back to that. And, uh, you know, I say, oh, I have an open identity, which is a circle in the center. That means that when I draw in that energy, I'm drawing in the energy of someone's soul, of who they really are. Yeah. So you could meet somebody and they're all dressed to the, you know, just amazing. They're, and, but you get this feeling there's something there, mm -hmm. not just right. Just this icky feeling. You can't explain it. And that's your open G saying, okay, the soul energy doesn't match with the percep perception that they're giving me. You see what I mean? And Absolutely. then you can have these emotional you know energies where you're like big emotions and and then you get home and you go gosh I feel really like I want to cry but I don't know why mm -hmm. and then you, you then you realize this is not my energy and see the whole thing about the reflector is they're reflecting what they consider the barometer for the environment so if a reflector is happy in their environment their environment's a happy environment but if a reflector is unhappy in their environment their environment's not happy you see what yeah. I mean yeah, yeah. So it, 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 they're big job, huge job. That's why there's so few of them because of this. And, and, it, and it, it's a very, it's a very tough energy to, to carry if you don't know. But once you know, you can start working with it. And the really cool thing about a reflector energy is they're lunar beings, which means that they're the moon sort of 
allows them to go through what they feel as they go. So for instance, making, making connections. And we talked about the electromagnetics, like, which is the, the two channels. So for instance, like somebody who has, this is a reflector, somebody who has this, this energy, because the moon goes around the mandala. Um, it goes down in 28 days, 28 to 29, you know, moon cycle yeah. it goes all the way through the mandala and every, and every energy it goes through about 10 hours. So, somebody could say that okay well i'm a reflector and i want to go out and i want to um, get a lot of work done and it, it requires a lot of workforce or sacral energy right and because this is where all if we look at the center here's so the square that's all about you know we talked about the generator square that's all about energy like it's all about getting out there doing the work digging your fingers in the soil that's why they say generators are the workers types right yeah, yeah. so if if a reflector looks at their chart and goes okay i'm going to get well i'm going to get sacral energy when the moon goes into the gate um what uh, gate 50 all right so this would be the gate 50 unfortunately you can't see the gates unless they're unless they're highlighted but say the gate 50 would give them sacral energy so they go through their whole cycle now their moon cycle is always going to be the same every month because the moon is always going to hit different gates right yeah the dates might be a little different but ultimately the most important thing for a reflector to know is that if they're out and they're getting overwhelmed and there's just too much going on nature getting out into nature yeah. getting away from people just that peaceful energy and getting back to themselves and starting to feel who am i when i all these people are not, not with me is really important for that and also getting a hold of their moon cycle and i have a whole video on how to work out your moon cycle so if anybody's interested in that Absolutely. So th that's the key with the reflectors. And, and I, I don't want to spend too much time on each one because I won't yeah, get through. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So the key piece of advice for a reflector would literally be when you get overwhelmed, get out in nature. Absolutely. If possible. I mean, it's not always possible, but if it is possible, absolutely get out into nature, come to your center, feel, feel who you are. And sometimes that's hard to find because you know, they're, they're wide open and they're always feeling everybody else. So what does, what does it feel like when you're on your own? And then also getting in touch with the moon and saying, what does it feel like when the moon is in this gate? What does it feel like when I have sacral energy highlighted? What does it feel like when I have willpower I highlighted? What does it feel like? You know what I mean? Those kind of things. And when you get through all that, then you start to get closer to how you operate and it's just a process and it's not an instant fix it won't and it's not even close to an instant fix but if you yeah. are willing to do the work you're going to get some decent results that's why I, I fully believe that i think it's the same with life as well a lot of it is trial and error i don't think you know Absolutely. anybody that tells you they have it all figured out first time round probably a cognitive dissonance kicks in there and says hmm <laughs> Yeah, turn the turn turn around and hit the road. You yeah. know, I mean, if someone says, "Yeah, I have all the answers you need," and yeah. I'm like, "Yep, I know." Nope. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and it's funny because that's one of the things that I always try to to stress to people. Um, I love what I do. I, you know, like to think I'm fairly good at it. Um, very good I tried to say that without being like conceited. I don't mean it like that. Um, mm. But just, you know, and that's what I say to people always, always defer to your own intuition. You have all the answers that you need. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not every, don't ever take any, every single word that somebody says to you for you, because at the end of it all, you know, all the decisions come down to you. So, you know, exercise that ability. It's, it's really important. All right. Give us another profile. Okay, so let's go into, um, whoops, Are you, can you see that? Yeah, so at the moment we're still on reflectors. Okay, so let's go to the manifester. Okay. Now, if we look at a manifester, they don't have, and, and, and as I said before, any type that isn't a generator will always have an open square down here at the sacral center. It will always be open. So if you notice, the manifester has an open square. Now, when you look at this, you could say, well, that looks like a projector. And maybe I should just, um, just I, I just want to show you the difference between oh, a projector okay, yeah, and a manifesto. And then they look very similar, don't they? Yeah. Now, the difference between a projector and a manifesto is a manifesto has what's called a motor to the throat. And this is a throat center. And any motor that gets to the throat, and we have four motors, the sacral, the will, the solar plexus and the root. So those are all the motors that we have. 
And yeah. ultimately, the whole the whole deal is that we want to get those motors to the throat, because right. in human design, the throat is considered the center for manifestation. So what begin begins as a dream manifests when it's spoken, right? When we think about that. So it's all about energy, getting the energy up to the throat. So we can imagine that there's all these these arrows and they're all pointing up to that throat center, right? That's so such an interesting the, concept because, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think uh, in a lot of the old mystery schools, they all talk a lot about the the word being or, or, or sound being, you know, that uh, generative exactly. that creates things. So, yeah, that's really cool. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. And, and I agree with you. I think it's it's a really cool idea that it is all about the center. So um, this looks like it's very complicated, but if we notice that the will center, that is actually a motor, right? And it's all about following the trail. So the trail says, and you'll see there's red and there's black. Now, red means that something is unconscious and usually up until the age of 40, you may be less aware of it. It's still a very big part of who you are. And people would say, well, you're like this and you're like that, but you may not necessarily see it. But then as you get older, you start to see those perspectives of who you are and how you, how you interact. So the red is all about unconscious. It's also considered what they call the design, but that's not really important. The most important part is that it's, it's energies that we may not necessarily know about ourselves. So it's even more important for us to kind of get in touch with these energies to see how we're doing it and how we're you know not doing it. Yeah. The black energy, it, again, this is the gates. So whenever we see a little bit of a line out here, that means the gate is defined or it's, it's activated, it's lit up. Um, so when it's black, it means it's something that it's more that you know about, that that's who I am. I, I identify with this idea who, of who I am. You see what I mean? So it's all about, the, you, you, the note, you notice the black and the red, are together and it just that's just the way the planets it's all in the planets up here again i don't want to get too into too many crazy details because it could get confusing but the will center goes from here to here so it goes into there from the 51 to the 25 then it goes from the one to the eight and it goes right to the throat so we see a manifester has a motor to the throat directly and it can be from this is would be the solar plexus if they had any of these channels here to yeah. find that would be the, but the key is they don't have a, a sacral center that's lit up, right? right? They have an open sacral center. So that's how you know. So would that right? suggest maybe that then they would need to bring in the energy to do something from someone else, but they can kind of create it almost kind of like a, not in a bad way, but almost like a backseat driver. Like they're really good at saying do this, but not necessarily doing it. Yeah, I think you're pretty close to that perspective. But manifestors, the one thing about manifestors are they are the true initiators. They are the ones that they have an idea and they go out and do it. Exactly. And you know who their authority is? Well, if they have an emotional, um, if they're emotionally defined, which means, which would, what, which I would say, this is not a, a manifestor, this is a manifesting generator. But if they're emotionally defined, they have a brown triangle. Yeah. then they're going to have an emotional wave and that's something to take into consideration for their authority. You're always going to defer to the emotional authority. If you are any type emotional authority, if you're defined, that's always going to be your go-to. And that means going through your wave and going through your wave means you go through it and you go, okay, I have a, I have an epiphany. I, I want to do this right, right. now. If I, if you're open and you have an epiphany, you go on it. You, you just go right get on, on your horse and get on that. But if you're <laughs> emotional, but exactly. But if you're open, usually you're going to go, Oh, you get reticent. You go, Hmm, do I, mm, is it going to, yeah. I, I don't know. So that's a very common thing, but it's going against the way that you should be based on, you know, and there's no should, could, would it's, it's, it's an experiment. You decide what works for you. If it works fine. But ultimately if you have an emotion, emotional um, center, emotion center, or solar plexus defined, you have a wave, which means that you get the idea, you go, okay, now if you're a generator, you need a sign from the universe, something to respond to that says, yeah. But before you get that response, you have to say, okay, does it feel good? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've, I've, I've decided that I want to do, a, I want to write a brand new book, and I want it to be about whatever. And so you go, 
do I really want to write that book? And in the beginning you say, yeah, that's exciting. I really want to. And then kind of halfway, a couple of days down, or it depends. Everybody's got a different emotional way of how fast it goes. It could be hours. It could be days. It could be like weeks. I mean, usually it's not that long, but usually it's a couple of days. Um, does it still feel good? If it doesn't feel good, then it's probably not the right way for you to, to, to proceed. But if it continues to feel good, then it's like, go. Well, as soon as you get your sign, your strategy, whatever it is, go out and do your thing. That's so, this, the, um, keep going. That, sorry, that reminds me of uh, one of the tips that you gave me was, because um, that's very much an energy that I'm totally aware of and aligned to. So like sometimes I can start something with all gusto I'll get maybe sometimes even like 70, 75% complete. And then at that point I'm like, Ugh. you know, like it's really hard to kind of push me or push myself. And one thing that you said to me was, well, wait till your partner is at home. And when they're home, you will be able to fire through everything. And do you know what? Even after I explained it, he used to say, do you want to start before I go to work? <laughs> you know, on whatever I was working on. And, and it yeah. really did, it, it would flow. And then even if he'd just say, like, you know what, I'm going now, I would still be sort of in that energy. So that was a really, really great tip that you gave me, and it really worked. So thank you for that. Well, that's related to the gate 53. Now, the funny thing about the gate for 53, I'm just going to go really quick and tell you a really quick, yeah, yeah. Uh, funny story about this. And then I'm just going to get back to the, the manifester. But the gate 53, my son has it. And um, he decided that with everything the way it is, he was going to start growing little plants, right? We have this little plastic greenhouse and he starts, you know, and he's, 50, he's got the 53. So he's growing all these plants and he's got all these little seedlings. And, and I say, well, you have to thin them. And he's like, no, I don't want to. And so that's the whole energy of the gate 53. It's like, yeah, let's start. Let's start. Let's start. Let's, let's, let's just, just keep planting, keep planting. And then, and then my, my other son has a 42 and he's like, are you going to finish the, you know, are you going to do that? And it happens with video games. My son, the video, I don't want to finish the video game. I don't want to finish it. And then my, my other son will come in and go, you got to finish this game because you yeah. got to finish this. I, I'm tired of looking at it. You know what I mean? We have to move on to something. Yeah. So this is the energy. So when you know that you have this energy and a lot of people with the gate 53 feel like, Oh, I'm a quitter. I, I, I always quit everything I do. And, and that's an awful way to feel because you, you know, you have to understand your energy. When you understand your energy, no, this is what I do. And the energy will come. And when it comes, I can finish all those things I've wanted to finish and I can feel successful and I can feel good about myself. And I can feel that mm -hmm. I am as, you know, I'm just as productive as everybody else. You see what I mean? So yeah. It, yeah, yeah. when you have this, you know, especially like that's a real dodgy gate, you could say, because mm -hmm. if you don't know the energy, once you know the energy, you're like, yeah, I got the secret. I, I, yeah, I can do absolutely. this. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's crazy because it's, it's very much like that. And uh, just before you go back to the manifesto, I have what I've affectionately called my Hermione mode. I just kind of go into this space, like I'll have ideas and I'll just disappear into them. There'll be books all over the place. I'm writing, looking at stuff, researching, and I will just go to that point where I create something. But then when I get to that point where I'm like, okay, you know what, I'm flagging or I'm tired that tends to be where I'll reach out and say, okay, you know what, I'll, or I'll wait until, you know, he's kind of there in my presence. So it was a really helpful tip, really, really helpful. So um, some of the light and shadow of yeah. a manifesto. And if you, light and shadow of a manifesto, of a manifesto is... Yeah. How does that show up? So if we look at a manifesto, we can see that, you know, what, what's their inner authority? Well, manifestors are here to do and, and, and be whoever they want to be. They are not here to be told what to do in any way, shape, or form. They are the true initiator. They're the white balls on the pool table. You know, the white ball that hits all the other pool, the, all the other balls, you, you know what I mean? You know pool? Yeah, like yeah, you have absolutely. the white ball and it's like hit, click, click, click. So when you meet a manifestor, you're being initiated. Whatever that is, they are initiating you. They're not trying to initiate you, wow. but they're initiating you. That's so cool. It, it, it's, a, it's a very powerful energy, and it's a really cool energy. Now, the only authority they have is their inner authority, as in if they don't have an emotional center, okay, and this person, for instance, wouldn't have a lot of inner authority, but they don't take rules. Like, so, for instance, if we talk about a generator, and we say, okay, when you see something in your outside reality show up, 
well, that says that, okay, the time to, time to go ahead. Right. Yeah. And with a, with a projector, which we'll get into, it's about this whole idea of an invitation or acknowledgement with a, a reflector. It's all about the moon cycle and, and figuring out and basically how it feels based on their moon cycle with a manifester. There's nothing. So what's their authority? Well, their authority is, is, is God, universe, whatever. Having a, a, a really great spiritual connection of whatever sort that feels right for them, yeah. whatever way is a way that they can figure out if, if what they want to initiate is going to work. Because you could say, oh, you're amazing. You, you can initiate. You don't have to wait. You can just go ahead and do your thing. Well, you don't think that a manifester is going to make mistakes like the rest of us? Yeah, you know, it's yeah. not, it, it's not just one thing. I mean, it, it, it's everything. You know, what if they're, what if they have the gate 53? Now, for instance, this person has a gate 42, this manifester. So they have the gate 42, which means they they come in and finish a project. Now, how can you be a manifester who's an initiator, but also a finisher of a project? It doesn't make sense, does it? See, yeah. so, so you have to know your energy to be able to make these kind of decisions. So what is a manifestor's authority? Well, it's connecting with something bigger than them, whatever that is. Wow. So maybe if, if you were talking about this in sort of like in terms of jobs and profession, maybe this would be aligning with like a governing body or maybe a corporate structure, something that's, you know, larger than you are or, um, you know, an entity or a body of some sort. Um, you mean the, oh, oh yes, as an analogy. Yes. I, yeah, I think so. I think so. Because, but having said that, a manifester can do whatever they want to do. There's no... There's no stipulations for what they don't want, you know, what they can do and what they can't do. They make their own opportunities. A manifester can walk into a place and say, you need me. And this is what I can do for you. And they get the job and you go, how, how did that happen? How did you do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. When they're awesome. in their, when they're in their mode, but being in their mode, being aware of their energy, knowing exactly, because a lot of them, just like everybody else, if we don't know our energy, we don't know how we're going to operate. We don't know how to push what we need out into the world and see that that's the thing about the manifestors. Manifestors don't like to be told what to do, right? <laughs> the They're not here it, to be yeah. told what to do. So they get angry. If you tell me, you tell me what to do, I'm going to get angry with you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And as a manifesting generators, manifesting generators have a little bit of that anger too. Don't tell a manifesting generator or a manifestor what to do. It's not going to work out. <laughs> Never will work out. Right. <laughs> yeah. You got it. <laughs> yeah. That's me. That's me. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. awesome. you can slide it in but don't <laughs> tell <laughs> um so yeah the, I, I really liked that about the um because you said something there that really felt like the key piece of advice for them like if you're if you're an initiator know your energy so that you know what to apply yourself to absolutely otherwise you're initiating things that are not in your best interest and they don't have a lot of energy because they don't have a defined sacral they have energy that is 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 you know, basically coming and going, there's no built-in battery. When a generator, a generator has a built-in battery, anybody who doesn't have a defined uh, sacral center or the red square doesn't have a built-in battery. So their battery comes from other sources. So they go out into the environment and they get revved right up and then they get home. They're like just flat because all that energy starts to disperse, right? So the manifestor key is find something bigger than you and initiate whatever you want to do. There's no, there's no, things that they can't do. They can do whatever they feel like they want to do. And that's the bottom line. And, and, and the biggest thing with them is to tell people what you're doing, you know, because even though that's the, that's counterintuitive to anything they want to do, they don't want to tell people what they do. They're doing because usually as children, manifestors are moving so fast. They're doing things They're they're always, you know, getting things super fast done. And as a parent, you're going, Oh, what's wrong? Stop. You can't do that. <laughs> you know, no, no, no. Yeah. So what do they do? Become secretive. They, they hide away. And so as, as a conditioning, as they get older, they could be like, oh, I'm not going to tell people. But what happens is they're going off and doing people, doing, doing, doing people, nah, um, doing things. And um, yeah, and, and, and they're not telling people and people are going, well, where were you? You were meant to be here. And you, and, 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 and in their mind, they're doing their thing because that's what they're meant to do. They're like whirlwinds. As, but as long as they're saying, you know what, I'm going to go to the store. I don't care if you, if you, <laughs> if you want me to go or not, I'm going. Um, it, it's less about a response to what you're saying and more about saying it. That's all. Absolutely. So. Love it. That's amazing. All right. So give us another profile. Okay. 
So we're going to go to a projector, which we touched on. Now, a projector is someone who doesn't have a motor to the throat. And we talked about the motor. So we look at a per person here. Now, you could have this whole chart filled, but only the red uh, square being open, you know, mm -hmm. and, but no motors to the throat. So a projector, like some people will say, oh, a projector has just a few centers. That's not necessarily true. That's not true. It is a projector can have as many centers as, as are defined, but the bottom line is there is no motor directly to the throat. And right. if that, and, and, and the, and the sacral center is open. So once we know we're a projector, now there's a lot of um, uh, projectors out, out in the world in big, big positions. And how do they get into those positions? Well, again, it's all about strategy and authority. And we talked about the emotional. So if you have an emotional wave, then you're going to always go defer to that first. But you also need with a projector. And I, I, and I say invitation, but I also say acknowledgement because an invitation kind of almost feels like, I don't know, sometimes there's like this, I don't know, it maybe doesn't feel so nice to always have to be invited. But maybe some people align with that. But I think the acknowledgement, it's just like a nicer word. And that's just my perspective. Yeah, but no, if I, you would... I totally, sorry to interrupt you. I totally agree mm -hmm. with that. And I think this is one of the problems with language nowadays. When you say like, well, hey, you have to wait for an invitation, it almost feels like you have to get permission to live or to do something, right? Yeah. And I, I love the way that you explain it. It makes total sense. Yeah, for sure. Well, well it's like it's like when you were in the you know a kid and, and maybe you wanted to go to a prom or something and you had to wait for an invitation it didn't feel good did it right because if you knew that you were going to get an invitation that's different but you have to wait and it's like oh but then you know so so that's that's kind of why i i do it the thing about a projector is that they are needing to be acknowledged to to sort of get their best things in life now what what are their best things in life huge things in life Okay, we're talking relationships, we're talking getting a new house, we're getting a, a new job, getting those are big jobs, big things that are happening in your life. Do they have to get an invitation or acknowledgement to go out and get some ice cream? Absolutely not. I mean, that's what we have to understand that projectors are not here to be acknowledged, you know, for everything they do. It's just a really big, big decisions in their lives. Yeah. And you'll usually go and say okay i'm a projector in this is this is my you know my experience that when i went out and tried to initiate like a manifester or you know just trying to did my own thing and just said no it's not really important that i wait for acknowledgement how was your experience you know what did it what did it what did it look, look uh -huh. like did you get better results when you had somebody say yeah you know what you're really good at that like i'd really love you to come on the team Oh, suddenly, bing, it's like all the lights go on and, and, and the universe says, yeah, this is your time. Walk into it. Do your thing. You know, and, and that's the most important part of, of using this energy to know that, yeah, maybe it doesn't feel amazing to wait. But having said that, the idea of when you get that, that big acknowledgement, it's like, oh, wow, you know, you just walk in and you're just... You know, some of the most powerful people in the world are projectors, right? Oh, Jeff Bezos. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's a projector. Yeah, Jeff Bezos. And he's like, yeah, he's a projector. Um, who's the guy from Guardian of the Galaxy? Um, Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. And his wife, uh, Schwarzenegger, what's her Amazing. name? Amazing. I didn't know that. Just because yeah. from what I know about his story... That's actually really yeah. interesting. I know when he started acting, he was very much like he chased a lot of things. He wanted certain roles. He yes. really, you know, went after everything. And he said, you know, at one point I started to wonder, you know, is this ever going to happen for me? Or maybe there's something wrong with me because it just wasn't happening. And he said, oh. you know, I, I tried as hard as I could. And he said, when he just let go and kind of said, okay, you know what? Well, in that case, I'll just work on myself for now. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he sorted his diet, he sorted his body, he did all of that. And then he got the invite for, for the Marvel thing. And, exactly. and he said, yeah. I remember reading his interview and he said, when I got that, um, that offer for the, the, the role, he said, I felt like my whole world had opened up. So that's really cool because, you know, I, I, I didn't actually know that until you said it, but it really resonates with his story. 
Well, it's, it's, it's this amazing moment where everything just breaks wide open, like you said. And, uh, and, and, and I think that if you are a projector, you will know of these moments. But when you're, you're pushing and, and then things aren't working out and you're getting frustrated and you just want to just like, oh, well, I'm useless. Nobody wants me. I'm no good. Right. But right. then you get the right audience. And the whole thing about projectors is that they need the right people. Everybody has their people. Like, especially projectors and projectors are here to guide and direct. I mean, that's the whole concept is a lot of times they're here to um, guide and direct the generators per se, and sort of <laughs> give them an idea of what's going on. And that's a hard job, <laughs> especially if you're a manifesting generator. Yeah. You're not going to want to be guided, much, but, <laughs> but you, know, <laughs> you know, you know how exactly, but, but because of that, they're here to, sort of give the, the, the information that generators need, they, they know, they can see, their projectors are, for the, from the perspective, they're here to know others less than knowing themselves kind of thing. That's the whole concept of a projector. That doesn't mean you can't have your own stuff. It doesn't mean that at all. But what it does say is that that's the whole concept of getting to know other people and their energies and, and knowing what they need. So a projector would be someone who could really guide you. But if a projector saying, okay, you need to do this, because I know, what's you, what are you going to say? No, <laughs> you're not going to say, you, you know, because it's, it's this energy that's saying, you know, they're pushing their energy on you and they may not necessarily be wanting to do that. But what they are doing is they're sort of superseding that con, con, concept of, do you want me to, um, like, it's like, it's like this, for instance, if I say to you, I have some advice for you. And I just blurt out the advice, right? And then, or I say, I have some advice for you. Are you interested in hearing? No, that, that little, you're inviting somebody to give you some information. And it's just that couple extra words and, it, and, it, and suddenly you're, you're open. You're going, okay, I'm going to listen because I've given you sort of the, the green light to tell me what you have to say. And that's the thing about projectors is knowing when to speak and knowing when to just wait. And sometimes that's the hardest part is, is they know the answer and they see somebody being frustrated and, you know, they're, somebody's trying to hammer in a nail and they're hammering it in, net, you know, sideways and, and projectors like, Oh my gosh, I mean, I know, I know, I know. And, and, and would you like me to give some advice? No. Um, and, and then and they continue. You, would you like me? To, yes. Yes. What, what am I supposed to do? And then bang, it's there. You know, they can give their information and they're being acknowledged and, and, and it just feels so much better for them. And, and that's the bottom line. It's all about that. So uh, projectors have their set of people and their set of people see them for who they are and, and they value their opinion. And that's the key thing about projectors. So. Wow. Thank you. Um, so give us another profile. What's the next one? Well, we can go with the generators now. I'm going to, those, they're almost like a duo. So we have a generator. This is a pure generator. And then this is a manifesting generator. A manifesting generator, as I said, it's, it's kind of a combination of manifester and a generator. Yeah. So a lot of times the problems that we can have as manifesting generators is that this high idea that we feel we can manifest. We can just get out there and do like a manifester and just get things happening. <laughs> Especially if you have this 3420, which is called the super pure manifesting generator. And, and they feel like they, they're hundred percent because there's so much power and charisma. You know, it's like, this is an Elon Musk kind of energy oh, wow. who's going out there and making things happen and getting people to work. And, you know, he's got this work ethic that, you know, he just burns the candle at many ends and he burns people out too, I'm sure because of it. But ultimately it's a super powerful energy that you could, you have as a manifesting generator, but you're also still a generator. So you have to respond. So we also go back to the idea of emotional wave. If this person has an emotional wave, go through the emotional wave, then respond as necessary and move on, you know? Yeah. And what does responding mean? It means that I have an idea in my mind of what I want to have in my world. I want to do something. What are the signs? Not that I had a dream, I mean, that we, we would like to say that that's a real dream, like that's a real thing. And yes, it is a lot of times a real thing. Yeah. But when we're first starting, we look at the idea of what. Oh. In the world that other people will see. It's going to show me that that's the way to go. I want to take an, you know, an email about an online course that fits my criteria. That's my green light to say. Yeah. Do you have me? 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, you just dipped out for a second there. Um, so you you were saying that in, in terms of waiting for things, it's kind of um, uh, almost like you ask the question and then you have to kind of wait for the response. Right. Yeah, you ask a question, you visualize something you want, you, you just put it out there and then the universe comes back. And then sometimes the universe doesn't come back with something and you go, oh, well, am I supposed to have any? But you're meant to wait. Uh, and, 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 and nobody likes to wait. Yeah. Bottom line, only people that don't have to wait are manifestors. Even reflectors have to wait. They have to go through their moon cycle so they know, you know, what, what, what's going on. So like, we're all in it together. Like we all are, you know, no matter what, there's no better type. There's no, you know, whatever. It's, it's just, everybody has their way of being. Now, if we look at the, um, the generator, the difference is that with a generator, there is no defined uh, well, not necessarily to find throat. There is no motor to the throat. So for instance, if we had the, another gate here and we and it had this motor that went to the throat, then that would be something that would be um, a manifest. Well, yes, it would be manifesting generator. Yeah. So you have to have this energy to the throat. What's the difference between a manifesting generator and a generator? Well, manifesting generator works a lot faster. The generator response is exactly the same as a manifesting generator. It's all about visualize, see what comes in your universe, respond or not, end of story. That's the bottom line. That's, that's how you operate exactly the same as a manifesting generator. But the difference is when you don't have a motor to the throat, that means that you may not be acknowledged for what you have to say unless you're acknowledged. Right. So, so say, say you're, you're, someone's a generator or anybody other than a manifester, um, like even a projector would have the same thing or a, a reflector or anybody. They're all going to have the same except for a manifestor and a manifesting generator. You're out at a shop, you're standing at the, um, the counter and you're saying, excuse me, excuse me. And nobody's really paying attention. Right. <laughs> but then a manifesting generator or a manifestor comes say, excuse me, boom, someone turns around and says, yes, well, how can I help you? That's the difference. Mm -hmm. You know, this whole idea of being acknowledged. And so because of this, when you have, a non-motorized throat it means that sometimes if you're sort of coming into a conversation people could say oh that's the person who's always butting in i mean they don't actually ever wait it's wow, yeah yeah that's really interesting um because I'm, I'm just thinking back to examples of being in secondary school and primary school you know, everyone remembers that kid that, you know, was always butting in when the teacher was talking. Yes. You know, there was always somebody like that. Or if, you know, in your secondary school, there'd be a bunch of you talking and somebody would kind of come and interject. Um, yeah. And I can really see that now. It makes total sense. Uh, there's one kid actually that really pops into mind. He was super intelligent, so smart. He had so much knowledge about everything. Um, but in all of our conversations, he was always kind of either talked over or people would just be like, yeah, who asked you? Or, you know, like yeah. all of that stuff. I actually felt really bad for him. Um, and it's just clicked into my mind because I'm like, I wonder how, you know, how he's gone about things. I know actually now he's quite successful. Um, I don't know what it is that he does, but I know he's done quite well for himself. So maybe he's figured out that energy you know, or how to work with it. Well, that's the whole thing is to figure out the energy because unfortunately, I'm going to have to tell you that people with open throats, um, especially with an open throat, like a, this one here, um, you can have a defined throat, which means it's brown, but it doesn't have a motor, but especially an open throat. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bullying. This is something that I've seen as, as a trend yeah. um, because these energy, the kids are not, they don't know their energy and they don't know that they need to be acknowledged. They know, don't know that they have to have somebody say, hey, what, what do you think? It sounds like it's, it's kind of like a mean thing that you, they'd actually have to be acknowledged, but energetically, that's the way they're configured. And they're going to notice that when they wait for someone to say, oh, what do you have to say about that? Or suddenly they're going to be, it's like a light goes on and they're heard. You that know what I mean? Exactly him. Like you're like yeah. you're literally describing him to a T. Like he was yeah. not necessarily bullied. Like one thing that I couldn't stand, even when I was in primary school, was bullies. Like mm -hmm. I just wouldn't yeah. stand for it. I know, so I was just to kind of, you know, muscle in and say, leave him yeah. alone. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and it's true. Like he, he wasn't just talked over, but he was, you know, he was one of those sort of um, run of the litter kind of kids. And, yeah. uh, but 
again, super intelligent. So what would tend to happen was he'd be one of the first to finish his work in class. Uh, and then when everybody else was stuck, because they were either talking too much or frankly not that intelligent they'd be like oh mark can you help me i know you finished now and he yeah. would be like yeah yeah you know i can help you with this and he you know yeah say, this is what you need to it's amazing like that is literally him i wonder you know i'm gobsmacked because i'm like i wonder if that was him if he's a generator it really sounds like it well open throat it doesn't necessarily have to be a generator it could be a projector it could be um anybody with an open throat okay. and ultimately that's the key is you know if they have an open throat um or even, and like they could have a defiant throat, but no motor. So sometimes people get confused. They'll go, well, what does that mean? I have a motorized, throat. I have a, I have a brown square, so I must have, you know, a, a motorized throat, but no, not necessarily. You have to look at, is there a line that comes from one of these motors that actually go right to your throat? And sometimes it can be like convoluted. It can be like, it goes from like one side of the chart all the way to the other. So you kind of have to follow the the breadcrumbs to get to see to make sure you know you have it but a lot of times when you get the free charts like you can get like the free, there's free charts all over the place for human design it's super easy to get them human design they'll give you a free chart they'll tell you what your design is and they'll give you even they talk a little bit about your strategy and that kind of stuff so you know it, once you start to see your energy and know that just because you have a brown square doesn't mean that it's always going to work better for you just to butt in or, or say which. But it's, it is interesting how you could see, like you could see that this idea where people are butting in and they are jumping in and, and you go, Oh, but it's energy and you feel repelled. Like, honestly, like you felt like, Oh, I, I, I don't really want to hear what you have to say. Isn't that terrible? that we feel that way, but it's an energy. It's not something that we're consciously saying, you know, you want to be nice to them, but if you don't know somebody, a lot of times we'll go, oh, like, why are you here, you know, just kind of, you know, even if we do know, you, you know what I mean? Like, you don't want to be that person, right? You want to be, let's be open, but let's be honest about, this is the energy that we feel, and we can't just ignore that either, right? We have to ignore how, we have to acknowledge how we feel as well as 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 the person right so. yes absolutely i think astrology kind of proves that point as well it really backs that you know and and if actually anybody that's watching this if you can think about it from that sort of standpoint you're mm -hmm. born to the sign and the signs that you're born to you you yeah. learn to work with those energies to get the best out of yourself um and i think yes yeah, the, the, it sounds like it's the same for human design it's whatever energy is that you're born to that's what you kind of carry it's what you're going to come up against and when you do meet other people and other energies that's going to to create a certain environment and learning to read that again going back to this self-knowledge thing that's what's going to kind of fill in the details so one piece of key, like one key piece of advice for a generator just respond to um, what feels good. And, and what feels good will be, if you have an emotional wave, it will be something that feels good the whole way through your wave. All the ups and downs, the dips and valleys, you know, you get up in the morning and you feel like, oh, I hate the world, but I still <laughs> want to do that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. that would say, yes, it's still a good thing for me. But you could wake up in the morning and feel, I feel really good, but I don't really want to do that. So that's saying, no, it's not really for you. Let it go and, and something better will come your way but respond and the response is something tangible I, as in doesn't have to be like tangible as in I can see it and you can see it. I didn't just have a dream or an angel appeared to me. And I think those are amazing events to happen. But as far as responding to them as a generator type, that wouldn't be considered something that's tangible because really you've only seen it. And it's, it's, you know, it, that's another, you know, story altogether, you know, these kind of things, this is intuition. And, but if we're going down to the brass tacks of the basics, well, as a generator, you, you visualize and then you respond. And if you want or not, you know, after something shows up, but it's always about response. Yeah. Now, the other thing is, is that a manifesting generator, one more, one more little key for them, it's all about informing too. So as well as responding, Telling the people that are going to be affected by your decision that you're going to do something is really important yeah. because manifesting generators, much like manifestors, just want to go out and do their own thing and just not really be bothered with telling people what's going on. 
So it's not on, a bad thing. It's just the thing. <laughs> yeah. Onto the, 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 is that, that's the final profile manifesting generator. That, that, well, generator and manifesting generator kind of group them together, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Like that's the five profiles and, and pretty much if you know your profile, well, that's, that's your, your party trick. So you know that part of it. And, and I don't like to say it as a party trick, but if that's the least, you know, like, it's like, you know, then at least that's going to help you in the respect of your strategy and authority. And authority is, of course, this whole idea. And, and the authority gets a little bit more convoluted as you go, like if you're a projector or if you're a manifester, your authority gets like a little bit more, you have to work with it kind of thing. I have a whole video on that too. <laughs> I keep throwing that in. I'm not trying to be self-promoting, but I'm just saying. Well, uh, What is the name of your channel where, pe where people can find you? HD with Denise Matthew and Matthew is spelt with one T. So. I'm going to put a link in the description box below so you guys can check out Denise's uh, uh, channel. Are you doing readings at the moment? Um, well, right now um, I, I did a few and uh, I've done some, but I, I might put it back up. But basically what I'm doing is, is like you got the video and um, it's about, you know, basically I'll, I, I do videos and then I'll send it to um, somebody and they can just I go at their life. I laughed mine, like literally. Yeah. Uh, well, I it's still, nice because it's a backup, right? Yeah, I still go back to it now. Um, and even like with the report, I go back over it and I read certain things and there's still moments where I'm like, yeah, you know what, it just clicks, it just makes sense. Um, that was the biggest thing that it gave me. There was some real moments in it that just made me go, yeah. <laughs> and it was also like, it was it was a real sort of, almost like a feeling of vulnerability, because I was like, man, she just opened me up and poured all my secrets out. Like, there's nothing <laughs> hidden here. But only to you. So yeah, nobody yeah, feels like sure. I'm, I'm going on YouTube going, yeah, you wouldn't believe <laughs> yeah, yeah. what I, I found it out. It was personal to me, like nobody else has this. So I've got some other questions here, if, if you don't mind. If sure, sure. Mind. Absolutely. So the big one that I want to ask you at the moment is what is the biggest thing that we need to know right now that human design has revealed to you? Maybe about the current times or the world or the, you know, just where we're at right now. Well, I think as much as of a personal personality tool as it is, I think just like that, just like that whole idea of I'm unhappy. I'm unhappy in this relationship. Why am I unhappy in this relationship? why, why is there this fight that we're always fighting about money? Well, that could be some of the energetics that you bring together. Why is it that when my spouse comes in or my partner comes in, they always bring all this energy, like this emotional, like angst. Why are they always like that? Well, that could be somebody with an open emotional and somebody with a, a really uh, like a defined emotional that has like really high highs and low lows, like a really, and somebody saying, well, I'm feeling really down today and what's wrong with me? Why am I feeling down? Is there something I should know? It, 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 uh, but there's nothing outside that says I should feel down. So why do I feel down? Well, that's someone saying, okay, you have an emotional wave. This is the time where you're in your low area and that's okay. What that means is that it, with everything in life, there is always going to be a change. Every time, every, every season has its time in our life, right? So we feel happy. And everybody thinks, oh, that's the best thing in the world. You're happy. And then we feel down and we go, oh, what's wrong? No, there's nothing wrong. Because yeah. why, are you saying, why are you saying what's wrong with you when you're not happy when you don't say that when you're, when, when you're happy, <coughs> yeah, right? Absolutely. absolutely. So, so understand that you are this compilation of a million different pieces and respect yourself and understand that if you're having a bad day or you're having a melancholy, melancholy or you're feeling like, yeah, not so good today. Cool. Run with that. You know, yeah. inform the people around you. Say, you know what? I'm having a, a moment. I need to, some, you know, I need to get away. I need to you like, and especially when you have these big emotional waves, sometimes creativity is like a huge thing or moving your body or all those kind of things. Like, and that's, and, and for somebody who's open emotionally to understand that when you go out in an environment and you're with a bunch of people, you're at a concert and you come home and you're just revved up to no end with an energy and you could be laughing and crying and all the same things, just to understand that that energy will dissipate and that, you know, you can use it for, for your purposes, ride the highs and 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 let go of it when you when you're done with it like that's the thing about when you have energy where you're, uh, you're sort of taking it in and amplifying it 
ride what you want to take, for, take what you want from it. And then when it's over with, let it go and understand that that was energy that was fluid and it's not meant to always be the same. And it's not, and that's cool when you think about it, right? You always have this new experience with all these different people, right? And everybody has some center that's open. I mean, uh, you know, pretty much. I mean, there's, there, I think there's a maybe very small percentage of has almost all the centers defined, but for the most part, we all have some level of openness in our chart. And those are the places where we can become the wisest is that's, that's pretty much what Ross said. We become wise about who we are. And because we we're working with that energy and there's a fluid energy and we're finding out all the different types of energy. So what do we, we need to know? We need to know that, you know, we are all individuals and it's cool to be who we are. And ultimately we need to start to um, be okay with who we are in the, in the, in the respect that all our bumps, and all our warts and all the things that we think are ugly, they're just all a part of who we are. There is no perfection. There is no Instagram reality. This is not, that's not a reality. This is a reality. You will be a jerk sometimes and you'll be <laughs> the nicest person in the world sometimes and it's okay. And as long as we can learn from our experiences and say, okay, well, yeah, I was a jerk this time, but next time I'll, I'll, I'm going to work on that and I'm going to try and be a better version of who I am. There's no competition in the world. It's a com com competition with yourself. Who was I yesterday? Who was I last year? And who am I today? And if you can say, I'm going in the right direction and that, you know, the light, I'm getting, I'm opening that crack and I'm saying, yeah, bring me some more because I'm ready for it. Yeah. Be you. That's it. I love it. I love it. That's so true. Um, there's a couple of things that you said there that I really want to touch on. Um, this idea <clears throat> of constant happiness, constant perfection. Constant, uh, yeah. it, it really reminds me of, um, I think there's a, there's a Japanese technique where they take broken crockery and they put it back together with gold. Wabi-sabi. Oh my gosh. And the result yeah. is just stunning. And, it, yeah. you know, I remember writing a piece about this some time ago. I was kind of in one of those moments where I was licking my wounds and I was like, you know, I, and, and I saw a picture of this bowl that had been sort of stitched back together with gold. And I was like, yeah, you know, this idea that we, we go through life and we go through moments that we feel like we're broken when actually the truth of the matter is, you're not broken you're rearranging your pieces and putting yourself back together in this even more enhanced version of who you are that has depth that has color you know every single scar on your body and i've got a fair few is is you know it's it's part of your story it's part of what makes makes you who you are i, I think that's where a lot of this seems to be driving for me i'm, I'm just starting to get comfortable with this idea that people want to know more about how Raph got to where he is and I'm kind Absolutely. of conscious of it and I'm like oh okay that means going into all the nitty nitty gritty right um very very true and it's so true you can have bad days you can have moments where everything isn't peachy and rosy and you know we were talking about this the other day I remember um this idea of ascension and stuff it's a wonderful ideal it's a beautiful idea that we are evolving into something else, but you are here. You are a physical human being who in, is a house for an entire soul that can, you know, that is connected to all that is. But if you try to kind of ascend or step out of the experience that you have, not only do you do the world and all the people in it a disservice, but you also do yourself a disservice as well because you're, it's almost like you're refusing to live the life that you have, you know, it's, oh, well, this is just a 3D reality. Um, okay, yeah, that's fine. But you were granted life above however many people that maybe never made it to even be in your age. Live the life that you have, you know, and, and live it well. Um, what was the line that you said earlier about... Um, uh, Ra said about, about the earth and, and, and what it is to us. Oh, yeah. I mean, again, it's this whole be here now concept. And if we talk about any of them, okay, so if we talk about Eckhart Tolle, um, power of now, it's like be here now, right? It's, it's in this moment. But what Ra said, which I found just the other day, and I thought it was very amazing. He said that earth is an ashram. And I think that I think that just sums it up. It, it really does. It says we have everything we need here to learn, to become better, to, 
to become more spiritual beings, but we can do it using our physical form, our physical body, getting out into the world, putting our fingers into the dirt, getting into those nitty gritty kinds of emotions and, 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 and parts of ourselves that we just want to say, yeah, that doesn't exist. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Close it. Close it. <laughs> I, I don't have time for you today. Please, please move off to the side. Uh, I got important things to do. You, you know what I mean? So let's get in there. Let's get in the deep stuff if we want. Right. And yeah. then pull back, go yeah, where you want to go, then pull back. And that, no, that it, really it can is be it. hard. Yeah. Yeah, that, that part of, of letting it go, you know, of going in there, doing yeah. some of the work, getting into it deep, sticking your toes in, in the, the sand and the grass or, you know, your own inner soil, getting yeah. in there and really dredging it up. And then yeah. when it gets too much or you've had enough, put it down, let it go, like you said. And I think, especially nowadays, this idea that we have to hold on to everything, that it must yeah. last forever. Yeah. I actually feel like that's a part of the, you know, a part of the issue that we might be having. That idea that the earth is an ashram, absolutely phenomenal. And when I was about 22 or 23, I had this idea, um, somebody was talking to me about the Bible. And I was thinking about Adam and Eve and I was like, okay, so this idea that you just mentioned now, it makes total sense. I kind of see it that the earth is the garden of Eden. It wasn't mm. just a small portion of the earth. The yeah. earth itself is the garden of Eden. It's perfect. Yeah. It's got yeah. all the natural stuff that sustains us and allows us to build everything else around it. Have this experience, be here now, know your body, know other people, you know, find ways to connect with the life that you have rather than a projection of what you'd like or, well, that's more favorable, so I'm going to ascend now. <laughs> oh, I think we've frozen. Oh, okay. Well, um, I think, well, that's a shame. Here we go. We're back. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Can you see me now? Yeah, I can. Okay. That was a bit <laughs> of a, yeah, that was an alternate universe that showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there we go. Okay. Are you there now? Yes. So, uh, is there anything else that you want to add? Before? Yeah, you had a really good moment where you were saying some really, you know, and, and that's the truth. And it's funny because I, I had a moment. Okay. Can you repeat that? I didn't hear you. Um, yeah. So, I was just saying yeah. this, you know, this idea that you talked about of being here now. You know, yeah. being in the life that you have and, and not being so quick to want to jump to a different plane or a different existence. There's yeah. so much beauty here already. Um, I remember reading a meme and it, this woman was saying, you know, I want to crack the bones of my life open and, and feed on all the goodness in there. It's a bit graphic, <laughs> but it, it really spoke to me because. But no, but that sounds really good. Yeah, you know, she, I kind of really got that from it, that she was saying, you know, I want to I wanna crack my life open and live it for all that it is and all that it's worth. And that doesn't always mean being totally high and happy and all of that. Sometimes it's having the, the alternative experience, but being happy with it still. And there's a secret, too, and a secret that I'm going to give to everybody is that we're all going to die. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we will find all the answers to all the questions when we go we will and until that moment we'll get a few drops like i always say you know our life on earth is about dipping our hands into the sea of eternity and we pull it back out and we just have a couple drops and that's literally what we get and that's okay be happy with the drops and keep dipping dig, you know keep digging in and keep getting a few more drops and eventually you know 
we'll get more about who we are. It's a journey. It's a journey and, and always have patience with who we are and, and um, just keep walking. Just keep walking. I mean, I really love that whole Dory uh, in, in Finding Nemo. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. And, and, you know, some days it's harder to swim, but just get your little fins and just keep moving. Love it. Love it. Listen, Denise, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on my channel. Thank you so much. Look, I'm actually considering we've got to do something else. I've had too much of a good time to not. So let's, uh, let's set that up. But again, uh, your channel is uh, HD with Denise Matthews, 1T. Yep. I'm going to stick yep. that in the link. In the no description. S, just, just 1T and no S. No, yes. Um, I'm going to stick that in the link in the description box below. Guys, thank you so much. I hope you have loved this as much as I have and you found it truly informative um, and so, so instructional. Take care and we will see you soon.